Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a mono-white life gain deck featuring Angel of Destiny, the new mythic rare angel from Sandica Rising. It's a 2-6 with flying and a double strike, and says whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we and that player each gain that much life. So it strangely turns all our creatures in pseudo life-linking creatures, but it also gains all the opponent that same amount of life back, so all the angel does is really gain us additional life and then at the beginning of our end step if we have at least 15 more life than our starting life total also known as 35 or more life then each player angel of destiny attacked this turn loses the game so if we have 35 or more life at the end of our turn and angel of destiny attacked the opponent we win the game so angel of destiny is this very strange alternate win condition but it works great in this life gain shell and it's also great in multiples because the ability from angel of destiny stacks unlike lifelink and it also works very well with lifelink since a creature with lifelink will essentially gain double as much life so angel of destiny is definitely an interesting build around card and we are playing it in this mono white life gain deck so let's take a look at the entire deck list at one mana we've got the full play set of all state of life's bounty a one mana one one enchantment creature with a lifelink and we can also sacrifice it to protect a creature or enchantment we control and the fact that it's an enchantment is very relevant with our arcan of sun's grace which has constellation which which we'll get to in a second, and we can also use the Alsate to protect our Angel of Destiny. Another one drop we could consider is the Speaker of the Heavens as a way to potentially generate 4-4 tokens if we are at 27 or more life. That's definitely another card we could potentially play. Then at 2 mana we are playing the full playset of Griffin Airy, a 2 mana enchantment that says at the beginning of our end step, if we gained 3 or more life this turn, we get to make a 2-2 two -two white Griffin creature token with flying. And of course in a life gain deck we've got plenty of ways to gain 3 life in one turn. And being able to make flying creatures is especially useful with our Angel of Destiny, because those flying creatures will have an easier time dealing damage to the opponent and gaining us that much life back. Then we also have the full playset of Skyclave Cleric. This will often be played as a land, so it's kind of part of the mana base as well. And enters the battlefield tapped. Otherwise, we can play it as a 2 mana 1 3 core cleric that, when it enters the battlefield, it gains us 2 life. So just a nice value creature that can gain a bit of life, which is great in a deck like this. Then we also have the full playset of Birth of Miletus, a 2 mana enchantment saga. On the first chapter, we get to search our library for a planes card and put it into our hand. On the second chapter, we get to make an O for wall. And on the third chapter, we gain 2 life. That that we can potentially combine with other life gain to gain the three life necessary to make a griffin token with our griffin airy and then another great card in this deck is a maze mind tome a two mana artifact and we can either scry with it at the cost of no additional mana and we can pay two mana and tap the tome to draw a card instead so this is a great way for us to dig towards our angel of destiny and other interaction that we might need and then as soon as we use the tome four times we get to gain four life and we have to exile the tome so another source of life gain to potentially trigger our griffin airy then at 3 mana we've got some interaction with Banishing Light, can exile any non-land permanent the opponent controls until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield, and of course also an enchantment for Constellation. And then we have two copies of Heliot, Sun Crowned, the 3 mana legendary enchantment creature god that's indestructible, but it only turns into a creature as long as our devotion to white is at least 5, so that's where all those white mana symbols in our enchantments also come in handy. And then for one and a white, another target creature gains a lifelink until end of turn, which plays nicely with our Angel of Destiny. Being able to give our double striking Angel lifelink is great. And then whenever we gain life, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment we control. So that also plays quite nicely with our Angel of Destiny, because those life gain triggers from Angel of Destiny all happen separately for each creature that deals damage. So for each one of those, we get to put an additional counter somewhere, which also goes well onto our Angel of Destiny, as double strike is just a great place to put all those additional plus one plus one counters. And then of course we can give life link as well. So Heliot and Angel of Destiny are best buddies. And then at 4 mana we also have the full playset of Archon of Sun's Grace. This is one of the payoffs for playing all those enchantments. We get a 4 mana 3-4 Archon with Flying and Life Link. And Constellation says whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, we get to make a 2-2 white Pegasus creature token with Flying. And Archon also says Pegasus creatures we control have Life Link. So once again Life Link combines great with our Angel of Destiny as we get to double dip and also gain life of the Angel's ability. 
Then we also have two copies of Shatter the Sky as kind of an emergency board clear in case we fall behind on board. Sometimes we can first Shatter the Sky to clear everything the opponent has in play and then start developing our board with Arkan and Angel of Destiny. Then we've got our four copies of Angel of Destiny, which is also great in multiples as we've discussed. And then two copies of Elspeth Conquers Death, another powerful enchantment removal spell that pairs nicely with our Arkan of Sun's Grace and can potentially get back an Arkan or Angel of Destiny from the graveyard. And then we also have two copies of Emiria's Call in our mana base as a potential 7 mana sorcery creating two 4-4 four, four white angel warrior creature tokens with flying and non-angel creatures we control gain indestructible until end of turn. Otherwise we can play it as a land, potentially untapped at the cost of 3 life. And yeah, and then we also have four copies of Castle Ardenvale, as well as four copies of Radiant Fountain, which can also gain two life when it enters the battlefield. So that's potentially another way to enable our Griffin Airy in combination with another source of life gain. And then 12 basic planes. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. We'll need to draw into some more lands, but We've got Maze Mind Tomb to scry towards him. Facing a turn one Ruin Crab, so some sort of mill deck. Um, I think I will play the All Sade on turn one here. Sometimes you want to hold it to then enable Constellation afterwards. But since we have Griffin Airy, the one life from the All Sade could potentially come in handy to enable the Airy to make a 2 2 token. Alright, so we definitely need to find a land here, so we'll prioritize playing the Maze Mind Tome to scry. Although we'll have to be careful with when we scry, because the opponent could easily mill us and then get rid of our top card. So we'll put some stops on upkeep and maybe scry on the opponent's end step. Iron Crack Paramancer, alright. That can potentially do some damage, dealing 3 whenever they draw a second card. And I guess this is a land, sure. Maybe not my preferred land right now, but it'll do. And then... Do I just play Heliods? Attack with Allsades, put a counter on it, it's probably gonna die to the Paramancer. Or I can just play it tapped and draw with the tomb, or play Eri, but Eri we can maybe play after the Archon. Yeah, I think I like just drawing with the Maze Mind Tomb. And then I might as well do it now in case we draw the other tap lands. Right, Radiant Fountain, we don't need to play right now. That's one Angel of Destiny milled already. Opt will trigger the Paramancer. I think I will still scry here since I wouldn't mind finding a land. And then we can maybe hold the Radiant Fountain until later, once we have Heliod in play. We'll bottom the tomb. One thing I often like to do is to play Arkan and Alcid in the same turn. But here it's kind of tricky because the sequencing doesn't work out. So we'll just have to play Arkan now and hope that it uh, survives. And then next turn we could potentially enable Constellation multiple times. Thrill is going to deal 3 damage somewhere. Opponent targeted our face so they don't have a shock in hand to combine with the 3 damage to finish off our Arkan. Teferi's Ageless Insight, alright. If we can find a Banishing Light to get rid of it, that would be great. Maybe should have scried on upkeep here too with the Tome. Although now... It's probably a good turn for Griffin Airy. Plus... 
Maybe just heal it so we can start growing the Archon so it doesn't die to the damage from Paramancer if they find another one. Or I can just play another Griffin Airy, play Alsaid and just make it million tokens. Yeah, I guess a million tokens sounds good. And then next turn we can play Heliot, plus maybe just draw a card with Tome. So now if they kill Arkan, it's not too bad. Although they could have maybe a 2 damage sweeper. Although if they're targeting Alsades, that's probably not the case. Frantic inventory, that's fine. So next turn we're looking at a ton of damage here. We can also get a few more counters from Heliot between the Tome and the Radiant Fountain. So they might just be dead here. Play Heliot. Play Fountain. Draw a card. And attack with all. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And while this hand might look like a one lander, we in fact actually have four lands in hand. Um, the only problem is we don't have a way to gain 3 life with double griffin airy. But if we can find an Archon of Sun's Grace or a Maze Mind Tome or basically anything else, this ends okay. I'll try it. And then turn 1, probably gonna lead with a tapped Skyclave Cleric, although now that we drew an extra land, maybe I'll end up just casting it. And then if we find another way to gain one or two life that could combine with the two life from Cleric to make a token. A Robber of the Rich. Alright, change of plan. I guess we'll just play Cleric on turn two. And maybe Banishing Light on turn three. Opponent found a Maze Mind Tome, that's a pretty good one to hit. And a Rimrock Knight Adventure is gonna take out our Cleric, that's fine. Probably gonna just Banishing Light the Robber here. They did play the Tome before we could exile the Robber, although if they ever found another Robber of the Rich they could still gain access to it, so... Playing the Cleric after we have a Heliod in play can turn it into a 2-4, which is definitely a significant difference, as it can profitably block cards like Robber of the Rich and Rimrock Knight. There's Annex. Alright, so what's my play here? I can maybe set a Birth to then eventually gain 2 life with a 2 life from Cleric to then enable Eri, which means probably just playing Birth now and playing one of the Gryphon Aries. Opponents cries with Tome. Double Fervent Champion, this is gonna hurt. And the Rimrock Knights. Uh, 
another birth. So do we even have time to wait on the Skyclave Cleric? I mean, it seems pretty important to make sure I can gain three life in one turn. And that's going to be difficult if I play the Cleric now. I think I'm just playing birth, getting a planes. And then playing Heliods. Which is a creature at the moment. And it's not easy for the opponent to remove my 5 Devotion in a mono red deck. And then next turn we can hope to play the other Airy and the Cleric. Opponent made full use of my Maze Mind Tomb. Hopefully no Ember Cleave here. It's gonna be a robber. And an attack with all. So yeah, they definitely have an Ember Cleave and... Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Found an Alsaid. I mean, I have to put Heliod here pretty much and then try and soak up as much damage as possible. But I'm pretty sure I'm still dead to a cleave here. Alright, maybe they don't have it. They do get two tokens. Place Alsaid and Alsaid, giving protection from white could definitely be a big deal. Although the wall we get at least is colorless. We'll put a counter on Heliod. And then we get to go Griffin Airy plus Skyclave Cleric. And we'll put a counter on the Cleric itself. And then I can still potentially activate Helia to give lifelink. And we get two tokens. Alright, so close game here against Monored. Pretty close to just casting the Emiria's Call, so that's why we saved it. Finding Angel of Destiny would be amazing with two tokens already in play. And wow, opponent just concedes, they can get past my Heliod. And yeah, we're gonna start gaining a life with Heliod's ability, with our tokens, make more tokens. And I can definitely see how a mono red deck is gonna struggle to compete with that. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Uh, I think this hand's keepable. We might even be able to make a token on turn 2 by going turn 1 Alsaid, turn 2 Radiant Fountain. And drawing a planes means we don't have to take 3 damage. So hopefully no blocker for the Alsaid here. A Ruin Crab, that one's fine. So Jeskai Mill deck here. Conqueror's Death can eventually get back our Angel of Destiny, so that's nice. Alright, opponent at least playing four colors here, can expect him to have Omnath in the deck. And there's Uro. And a Fable Passage, plays nicely with a Landfall as well here. Alright, so don't have much going on right now. I think I'm saving Imrios Call since we have a decent amount of lands to work with already. Our opponent does decide to fetch end of turn. 
Sometimes it's better to save the Fatal Passage if they have another landfall creature they want to play first. But it looks like they've got different plans. So still 37 cards remaining. Not too concerned of getting milled from a single Ruin Crab. But there's Omnath. So... Could shatter the sky, although it's not ideal here, as that would also wipe away my two creatures. And we do have a Conqueror's Death in hand, which is a decent answer to Omnath. So, I think the play is just to do nothing this turn. And then hope that Omnath doesn't go crazy. Stomp, I guess we'll protect the wall from uh, Omnath here. Alright, so we get to play Conqueror's Death, hopefully. Brazen Borrower bounces the token. Sure. And in two turns we'll get back an Angel of Destiny, most likely. A Lotus Cobra shows up. The crab is being feisty. Opponent can flash in Brazen Borrower end of turn. I could shatter here, but feels a bit unnecessary. Although I might regret it if they have a fetch land to make two more mana with Cobra and casts something expensive next turn. I guess I can shatter and still play a tome. And then I get to play a borrower afterwards. Alright, I guess that's good enough. And then uh, they're pretty close to escaping Uro as well. Although that's another creature we can potentially exile with our Conqueror's Death. I'm okay scrying since we wouldn't mind a bit of action. I don't hate another tomb. And this turn we'll just get back Angel with a plus one counter. And draw with tomb, see what's up. Another Angel, okay. Haven't played land for the turn yet, so we'll just draw. And then... Now I'm kind of into just playing this tapped. Since we have some expensive cards in hand, we wouldn't mind playing. Plus we have all these tomes we can activate. Let's see if something bad happens to our Angel. Escape to the wilds. It's also a very good card in combination with Lotus Cobra, which we see here. Alright, so what am I doing? I think I just take my draw step. Another Emiris Call could be nice. And then I can play Angel of Destiny and attack and then take it from there. Are they dead if they just take it here? Let's see. Yeah, I guess they just lose. Cool. It's crazy how quickly you can gain life with Angel of Destiny, especially if you have two copies in play. 
So I, I'm not too surprised with my opponent just taking it there. But as it turns out, they just die. And Angel of Destiny doesn't gain life if uh, the creature is blocked. It's only when it deals damage to a player. That's why flying creatures are so important. But yeah, they could have prevented all life gain by just chomping with a Brazen Borrower. But uh, yeah, just goes to show that Angel of Destiny is a pretty legit alternate win condition. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an okay hand. I'm okay playing the Alsates, so we can maybe use the one life gain with the two from birth to enable Eri. Facing turn one Lovestruck Beast Adventured. Yeah, I should probably wait on offering this trade. In case they have another one. Which they did. So, play Griffin Airy and then next turn can play another Griffin Airy and maybe attack to gain the one life. Plays Yorvo. That's a lot of Griffin Ares right there. So, definitely seems worth it to sacrifice an Alsade here to make a bunch of tutus. Suppose we could have attacked before playing all the Ares, but I don't think my opponent's uh, taking one lifelink damage. So if we draw land 5, Angel of Destiny is going to be great. Although Questing Beast gets around our blockers nicely. Don't really get this attack. Banishing Light can deal with the Questing Beasts. The Great Hench shows up. That's a nice one. Would have been a good target for Banishing Light as well. Primal Might kills my Alsade. Alright, so Land lets us play Angel and gain 6 life here essentially. Which will then also make a whole bunch of Griffin tokens. Hopefully they can't remove Angel of Destiny, and then things will get out of hand very quickly. Another Questing Beasts. Do they have another Primal Might? If they don't, they're in trouble. they do. Alright, so we'll need to find another Angel of Destiny here. Still don't get this 1-1 one, one attack. I guess they don't want me triple blocking Yorvo, which I guess triple blocking Yorvo would be reasonable. Points at 18, but they can gain more life with Henge each turn. Yeah, you know what, maybe triple blocking Yorvo is the way to go. They could easily have another copy in hand, but Alright, Arkan keeps me alive for now.
So Beast is gonna drop me all the way to one. They do have a backup Yorvo. Although they probably drew it off the Lovestruck Beasts. Now I still need to draw something here since I can block Questing Beasts. And Griffin Airy doesn't really do it. Yeah, I can attack with all. Arkan makes another 2-2 two -two token. But uh, yeah, I can make as many 2-2s two as I want, but they can block Questing Beast. Yeah, it's a shame. If they didn't have the second Primal Might, the Angel of Destiny alternate win condition probably would have been met sooner or later. GG's. Interesting. They probably should not have attacked with... Uh, Beast and Yorvo here, because now we get to gain two life and we're not dead. So, opponent's giving us a chance. They can still gain life of food tokens, potentially. So they're not necessarily dead on the way back. But I'll take an extra draw step to maybe draw out of it. Gem Razor. Mutate it onto the goose to destroy a Griffin Airy. That's not great for me. Planes the draw. So if they go up to 12 block here, they're still taking Exaxis. Alright, I guess uh, we'll get in with everyone. Yeah, maybe they were better off just making food with a goose, because they could have gained six and potentially survived. So mutating gem racer might not have actually been the play there. All right, well we managed to snag victory from the jaws of defeat, so that's always satisfying. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with uh, solid opening hands. Can maybe save the radiant fountain until the third chapter of birth to enable the Griffin Airy. And since we have Birth grabbing a land, I'm okay holding the Imerios call. Alright, Cycling. It's been a while since we faced a Cycling deck. Don't really have any Graveyard hates, so a big Zenith Flare could definitely kill us. Although we do have a decent amount of life gain, so we can maybe get out of range. Alright, I think I'm okay playing another Birth, and then next turn we get to play Griffin Airy plus Radiant Fountain. We managed to dodge the turn 1 Flourishing Fox, and our opponent still hasn't found any creatures that they want to play out. So maybe their hand is just all Zenith Flares. Alright, I guess we can play Arkan and then next turn we'll gain two life. And we can play Griffin Airy to trigger Arkan of Sun's Grace. Although it might die here to the Zenith Flare. Never mind, Valiant Rescuer.
And then of course Arkan, being a three power lifelinker, pairs quite nicely with Gryphon Arium more than one way. So I don't even need to play the Radiant Fountain necessarily. Might be able to save it for later. Especially if we draw Heliod next turn, we can maybe get an extra plus one counter out of the deal. Alright, so if our opponent does have Zenith Flare, they're probably forced to point the first one at our Archon of Sun's Grace. How many cards in Graveyard? Nine. Well, looks like they might not have it. So they're just cycling, but not really achieving much. Another Archon. Sure. Six mana, cycles boon, cycles go for blood, 15 cards, I guess. Yeah, they're just gonna go upstairs anyway. They're also gaining a life in the process, but... I think this is a race we can win. Back up to 33. is just gonna keep on cycling. Eighteen cards in graveyards, nineteen, and eighteen of those have cycling. And yeah. Just gonna go upstairs again. Get to attack with all. Gain some more life. And I guess we'll just play the Banishing Lights, because the game's probably going to end next turn anyway. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, if they had the Zenith Flare in hand earlier, they probably should have just dealt with Arkhan first, since the Life Link makes it very difficult to race, but it is possible that they drew into it later. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, decent looking hands. Birth can find an extra planes, double tomb to scry towards whatever we need, and then Angel of Destiny in hand already. Facing a turn one adventured lobster beast. And what do we play here? I think Birth to get the wall as soon as possible makes sense. And then there's a chance we can combine the two life with. Two life from a cleric to make a token, we'll see. Picked up an Alsade. Yeah, getting a token with Griffin Area would be nice. So that means this turn I have to play the Griffin Airy. Play Alsade, I guess, and then Next turn, just play the Cleric. Small chance I can also gain one life with Alsade, but that probably means losing it to the Lovestruck Beast blocking, which doesn't sound great. Alright, a ram through takes care of my Alsade, that's fine. And a Garrux Harbinger. Hmm. So we didn't draw another land. Is making a Griffin token worth it here? Yeah, I think it is. A 
allows me to potentially double block the Harbinger. And just having a few flying creatures once we play Angel is also great, because that makes it easier to keep enabling the Airy afterwards. Although missing land drops, of course, isn't ideal. Primal Might kills our Griffin. Alright, land is great. I think I prefer double tome over tome draw card. And then we can ensure that we find lands for Angel of Destiny, which is also great in combination with Heliod. Questing Beasts. If I find a Shatter the Sky, I'll keep it on top, otherwise I think I'm just digging for untapped lands. Yeah, that doesn't quite do it there. Alright, hopefully they don't have another Primal Might, because that would sting. Not getting immediate value from Angel is potentially bad here. That's why having a board presence with the token would have been better, but... They didn't seem to have removal, so Angel can hold off the Harbinger, and then we'll take four from Questing Beast, that's alright. Hmm. Weird attack. Because Ram through with Questing Beast would have killed the Angel anyway, so it's going to be a 5-5 five, five Stone Cold Serpent that does hold off my Angel of Destiny, Shatter the Sky. Interesting. I should maybe keep Shatter the Sky as kind of an emergency button here, but I can still play Heliod, give Angel lifelink, and that does get past Stone Cold Serpents, so they might not block it, and if they don't block it, that's great. So let's attack, because we can give the Angel lifelink. Make a griffin. Both of these tomes are on two counters, and yeah, opponent packs it in. So 4-8, double striking, Angel of Destiny, that's just going to keep on growing as soon as we put more counters on it with Heliot, and can keep making more Griffins with the Griffin Airy. It's going to get out of hand very quickly, so if they don't have Primal Might or some other removal spell at the ready, then uh, it's going to be difficult for them to come back. Sweet, so yeah, Angel of Destiny, definitely the real deal in combination with Heliot, in combination with additional copies of Angel of Destiny and I've been able to win a fair share of games with the alternate win condition. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.